You've been asking for advanced fusion tutorials. Well, it's time to do that. Here's what we're going to be making today. Oh, there it is. There it is. So we have this 3D product box kind of coming in hot here with some graphics. We've got a reflection going on. This is a pretty cool little thing. And uh, even if you're not looking to make something exactly like a product box, this is going to teach you a whole bunch of stuff about fusion that you might not know. Let's do it. So here's the node graph that I have set up for this comp. And we're going to take this just one step at a time. I'll go up here to my media pool, right click and say new fusion composition. And we'll call this box two. And I'll double click on that to open up our blank composition here in the fusion page. I'll reset our workspace so we all have the same thing going on. And we're starting with our little media out node. Let's put a background in. So just grab a background and connect it to our media out. So now we have our background and our media out. We have a black background. Now to get that 3D box, we're going to import an FBX. If you don't know what an FBX is, it's a 3D mesh that is made from a 3D program. Here's a simple box that I made in Blender. You can make this with whatever 3D program you're used to, or if you don't know anything about 3D, you can download a mesh and everything in Fusion will work the exact same way. But all we have to have is a mesh that has a texture applied to it and it laid out the way that we want. If y'all want a video on how I made this box, I'll post a tutorial on that and link it in the description. But the big idea is that you have a mesh and you have a texture that is applied to the mesh in the right way in your 3D app and you export it as an FBX file. In Blender, I can select this mesh, go up to file, export FBX, and just make sure that selected objects is selected here and I can save that out. That's all we need to do not in Resolve, but back in Resolve, I can hit shift spacebar and type FBX and we're gonna want FBX mesh 3D and I'll hit add. And now it'll ask me for the FBX. I'm gonna select stuff box two. And now if I select this mesh and hit one to bring it up in this left viewer, I can hold down alt and middle button mouse drag to kind of move around here. Now we don't have any texture or any lighting on this. I can get a little bit better idea if I go up here to these kind of view options and I select lights. And now we at least have kind of a shaded view of this. So now we have our box, but we need to put a texture on it. For that, we need to make a material. I'll hit shift spacebar. I'm gonna add a material called Cook Torrents. This is just a material that has a lot of settings we can mess with. And I'll hit add. And I'll connect this Cook Torrents to the FBX mesh. And now if we did this right, if I change the color of the Cook Torrents, that changes the color of our 3D thing. Sweet. Now this Cook Torrents material has all kind of inputs that we can put fancy textures into. I'm just gonna apply a basic texture here. I'll go up to the media pool. And I have a PNG here that is the same PNG that I used to lay out my textures in Blender. I'll grab this PNG and just drag this down as a media in. And what we're looking for is the color diffuse material, which is the yellow input. I'll grab this, connect it to the yellow input. And now guess what? Oh baby, we have our 3D mesh textured inside of Fusion. What's going on? So we're doing pretty good. I'll close the media pool. And let's rename stuff so that we don't get confused. I'll just select it and hit F2. We'll call this box texture MI for media in. Cook torrents, can, we'll leave that. FBX mesh 3D, let's call this box mesh FBX. And we can't merge this over a 2D layer. Because this is a 3D mesh, we need to put it into a 3D environment, which in Fusion is called a merge 3D. So let's bring that down, push this into merge 3D. Let's take the merge 3D and Put that into a renderer 3D that will turn our 3D stuff into a 2D image, which is jacked up at the moment, but we can take this output and merge it over our background. And now we'll have our black background and the image of our 3D mesh over it. One thing we need to fix immediately is that this we're like inside of the mesh right now. So we need to add a camera and move the camera around. So I'll grab this camera icon here, drag this in, and let's just put this into the merge 3D. And if I bring my merge 3D up in my left viewer, I can select my camera and move that around. And now we see, you know, as we move the camera around on this left view, we can see the box starting to make any sense at all on the right view. Sweet. From here, we can take our FBX and we can adjust its transform here in the inspector. 
and I can rotate this on the Y axis and look, we're getting there. This is uh, this is a thing. So let's go ahead and kind of put this where we want. I'll rotate this like this and push this box kind of heavily to the left. So it's, you know, nicely framed on this uh, left third of the screen. From here, we can animate this. So I'll grab this FBX and let's have this end up here at like 30 frames. I'll keyframe rotation and our X translation. And here at the beginning, we're gonna move this back over. Let's go ahead and do like 200 and maybe 300. We just want this off screen a little bit. Let's go 500. There we go. So now it's just off screen and it will move in like this. But at the beginning, let's turn this a little bit. I'll just tweak that rotation a little bit. So now as this comes in, it's turning and then it stops right there. Awesome. So let's play this back. Have that coming in. Oh, baby, it's looking good. Now, we don't want this animation to be too jerky, right? It just kind of comes in and stops immediately. We want it to ease in. So let's go over to the spline panel, open that up, and let's click our X offset and Y rotation, and click the zoom to fit button. And now at the very end, these end keyframes, I'll select those and hit F to flatten out those tangents. And now this will come in and just nicely pause, you know? There we go. All right. So we have our box built. And if I select media out and hit two on the keyboard, we have this coming in. But one thing is this looks kind of cartoony. The reason for that is there isn't any lighting on it. It's just kind of the surfaces of the box being kind of tweaked to look like it's 3D. So let's add some lighting. First thing I'll do is add a directional light. Let's hit shift spacebar and we'll type L-I-G-H-T. That'll bring up all the lights that are available. And let's get a directional light like this and I'll hit add. And this is gonna be our key light. So I'll hit F2 and type key. And we'll connect this key light to our merge 3D bringing it into our 3D world. And since we have Merge 3D open in this first viewer, we'll see the light show up right here. I'm moving around in this 3D world by either clicking and dragging with the middle button, that's the scroll wheel on my mouse to kind of pan. I can hold down Alt and click and drag with the middle button to orbit. I can roll up and down to move up and down. I can hold Control and scroll to zoom in and out. And with a combination of all of those things, you can kind of move around in 3D space. So what we're gonna do is take this key light and I'm gonna bring it back and up and to the right. It doesn't actually matter where this directional light goes, but just to kind of keep us organized, I like to put this where it would be in the real world. Also, I'm gonna go up here to these little buttons here. This kind of switches out between rotate and translate. And I'll take this rotation gizmo and let's take this green axis and we'll point the light towards the box and then down a little bit like that. And again, this is gonna be our key light. So we're just pointing it right at the box. Now, our preview here on the left, we can see what that light is lighting, but on the right, nothing's really happening. That's because in our renderer 3D, we don't have lighting enabled. So we go over here and enable lighting and shadows. And now we have these kind of shadows happening here on our box. So that works for now. I'm gonna take this key light, I'll move this up here and kind of get organized a little bit. I'll take this key light and I'll hit Control C, double click off of everything and hit Control V. This is gonna call this key one. We're gonna rename this to fill. That's gonna be our fill light. And I'll take this output and put it into our merge 3D as well. And now this fill light, let's select that here in the node graph. And here in our Merge 3D, I'm going to kind of move this around. So I'm going to, first of all, level it a little more. And then I'm going to move this over to the left, just again, so that I have these kind of split up and I can easily grab them and move them around and see which one's pointing which way. And we'll take this and we're going to kind of point this on the other side of the box, okay? So we have two lights, one coming from the upper right, another one coming from the upper left. But what happens here is this flattens this out to the point where it almost doesn't look like we have lights again. 
So to really see the shape of something in 3D or in lighting in general, you have to have some contrast here. So this key light is gonna be our brightest light, but the fill light is gonna be maybe like half. And I think I actually switched these. This is really easy to do, to switch which one is which. That's okay. So this key light apparently is on the left and the fill light is on the right. So we're just gonna rename this. This will be called fill light. This will be called key light. And the key light will be at full intensity and the fill light will be about half. So now we have that difference between this front face of the box and the side. And as this box animates, that lighting is gonna change, which makes it look 3D. Yeah, let's go. So that's a pretty good start. We're also gonna want a kicker. So that's a light that shines from the very back, like from behind what we're shooting. So let's just make a new light, shift spacebar, again, directional light, and we'll add this to our merge 3D. This one's gonna be our kicker, and this kicker is gonna go behind our box and probably up a little bit, just like we were really placing a light behind it. But again, it doesn't really matter for directional lights where they go. This is more of an organizational thing. So let's turn on our rotation gizmo here. I'll turn this all the way around and I'll tilt it down a little bit. And depending on which way we shoot this light, it'll make a difference or it won't. So what I'm really trying to do is kind of highlight this edge. So right there, we can see this little edge kind of lighting up a little more when we have this light on or off. So here's no kicker and here it is with it. So it just adds a little bit of edge there. And that's going to be a little bit more pronounced later. Let's turn this intensity up to like three, maybe. There we go. So now we're kind of getting a little bit of glint off that little edge. Maybe we want to add another kicker. Grab this and hit Control C. Double click off and hit Control V. Attach that to the Merge 3D. And this kicker will do the same thing. We'll kind of rotate this to where we can get a little bit more glint off the top here. That's what this other kicker is doing, giving just a little more glint. We might not even need this other kicker now, but we'll keep it on for now. The lighting thing is really, you kind of have to just play around with it because it's hard to get right the first time. You really have to mess with stuff. So let's call this kicker two. Okay, I'm gonna select all of these lights, move this up and hit shift spacebar and type UND for underlay. That's gonna add a little background here. Now click off of it and then hold down Alt and select this underlay. And that will select only the underlay and not the nodes that it's surrounding. And I'll hit F2 and we'll call this lights and we'll make this apricot. Nice and bright, like the lights, right? So now we have kind of a little group here. Let's start spreading things out a little more. Here's our camera. And we're starting to build out our node graph. So now we have like a lot of the basic stuff going on here. Now it's time to get it a little bit more fancy because let's say we want this to look like it's on a reflective floor. There isn't really a way to do this with real reflections inside of Fusion. To get those real kind of ray trace reflections, you need to actually use a 3D app, but we can fake it in a really cool way. Here's what we're gonna do. We're basically gonna take this box, we're gonna duplicate it and flip it and put it under itself so that we're really looking at two boxes stacked on top of one another and where they meet in the middle will sort of look like a floor. So I'll hit shift spacebar and we'll type in XF and that'll bring up anything called transform. And what we want is transform 3D. What this node does is it takes things and transforms them in 3D space, amazingly, right? So I'll take this mesh and pipe that into our transform 3D. And now essentially what I'm gonna have is a duplicate of this mesh that I can move around kind of independently. So I'm gonna take the output of this and put that into the merge 3D as well. And nothing's happened yet, but if I take this and I move this around, we'll see that we now have two boxes. So what we're gonna do is take just our scale. Here, I'll unlock XYZ. And we're gonna scale this on Y to negative one. And when I hit that, guess what happens? Boom. It makes a flipped copy 
of this 3D mesh right under our other mesh. And what's really cool is that because we have all of our animation on this box, it's taking that animation and it's applying a flip to it. And so it actually moves along with the box automatically. And we already have a pretty good looking effect here. So that works pretty well. And if we like that strong reflection like that, we could probably just leave it like that. But we're gonna do some more fancy things. What we wanna do on this reflection is blur it a little bit. And we also wanna kind of fade it out at the bottom. For any of you who remember back in the day, back in 2007, our buddy Andrew Kramer did a tutorial about making 3D reflections in After Effects, and it used basically the same process that I'm gonna use here. So this is a really smart way to make kind of fake reflections that we're kind of adapting for Fusion all these years later. And basically the idea is that we take this flipped 3D object, we put it on its own 2D layer, and then we can mask it and blur it by itself. To do that in Fusion, we need to do a little bit of fanciness. First of all, all of this, all of the 3D stuff is coming in through this renderer 3D, which is basically making its own 2D layer. What we really need is this transform 3D, this duplicate of our box to be on its own 2D layer so that we can do stuff to it. So what we're gonna do is duplicate this merge 3D and connect it and kind of make the same 3D environment, but we're gonna split these two boxes into two different layers. How do we do that, you may ask? Well, I'm gonna take this Transform 3D down here and let's select this Merge 3D and I'll hit Control C, double click off of it and I'll hit Control Shift V. What that will do is make something called an instance. An instance is like a linked copy of a node. And so any settings that I mess with or anything for this Merge 3D is also gonna happen here in this Merge 3D. So if we want to tweak something later, we can. We might not need to do an instance for this exact situation, but this is a great thing to get in the habit of if you wanna make two nodes that kind of share the same settings. Again, that's select the node you want, hit Control C, double click off and hit Control Shift V and that'll make it instance. So we will need to connect our lights. So I'll just take each of these lights and drag it onto our Merge 3D like this and also our camera. And now we have pretty much the same 3D environment, but we're gonna take this transform 3D out of this first one and put it in the second one. I'll also take this render 3D, which I think we'll just instance that too. Control Shift V, we'll take the output of our merge 3D into this render 3D. And we'll take the render 3D here and put it over our background. And now our media out should look exactly how it did. Looks pretty much the same. The only difference is that this box and the lower box are in two different 2D layers. So I could turn off one layer by turning off the merge. So that's on one layer, and this top one is on one layer. Let's take a second and get organized. First thing I'm gonna do is go to this merge 3D and this like spaghetti here. If you select any node, and then you go over to settings here in the inspector, you can select hide incoming connections. And what that will do is when you're not selecting a node, it will hide all of the connections just so it doesn't look so overwhelming. So that's pretty cool. And again, because these merge 3Ds are instanced, that happens on both of those at the same time. So now that cleans things up a little bit, makes it a little less horrible. We'll line this stuff up a little bit. And let's name these merges, I'll hit F2, and we'll call this reflection merge. This is gonna be called box merge. And now anything that we put in between this render 3D and this reflection merge will affect only the reflected image. So if we were to do something like add a blur, grab this blur here, drag it in between render 3D and reflection merge, and I push up the blur size, we are blurring just the reflection. And I think just a slight blur would do us good. So now we have this kind of blurry reflection here, which looks great. And we can also mask this so that it kind of fades out as it goes down. So an easy way to do that is just to add a mask to our merge. So I'll take a rectangle mask and just connect this here to our merge like this. And we'll zoom out and I'll make this nice and wide. And we'll just kind of put this down. So it's almost halfway off the screen and then we'll take our soft edge and kind of just feather that out a little bit just so we're starting to see it fade out. I think that works well. 
now we pretty much have our box and our animation set up and it looks pretty sick. A couple things that I want to do to just make this a little nicer is obviously we need to switch out the art for this box. The great thing is that we can use this texture here that we've kind of set up and done our UV mapping in Blender from, and we can just kind of replace whatever's here with whatever we want to be on the box. So you can do this in an image editing program. You could build it here in Fusion if you wanted to like this. So I could do something like take a background and just merge it over my texture. I could do something like, you know, if I wanna make kind of a pinker box or something like that, I can just make a solid pink texture. And now we have a pink box and I can just kind of build out a comp here that's gonna work for my box and I can kind of see it happen in real time. And I can move this back and forth here on my left and see it actually come to life on the right viewer. And it's, uh, it's pretty fancy. Just whatever I connect to this material here, that's going to be the texture. And so what I think I'll do is grab this image that I made in a design program and I'll just kind of disconnect these right now and reconnect our media in. And there we have our nice art kind of switched out. Works pretty well. Let's change our background color. I'll go down here to our background node, which is just a black background right now, but we'll take this color and we could do something like this. And now we have this nice blue background and pretty much whatever we want to do to kind of build this and make it look nice. Again, it's kind of the same thing. I could merge another background over this kind of move this down turn the blend down and we'd have sort of a floor and it's all kind of a trick, right? It's not really a 3d floor, but it looks like a floor just to keep us organized. I can select all of that shift spacebar UND for underlay, click off of this alt click to select just the underlay and hit F2 and we'll call this BG for background. We'll set this color as teal for now. Cause that's sort of our color. All of this can be box art, another underlay, Click off, alt click, F2, box art. We'll make this a nice color so we can easily see it. I'll just make it violet. Now we have our sections kind of organized here so that we can easily get to whatever we need to later. From here, it's just a matter of if we wanna add some text. So I'll grab a text plus. I could also probably do this in the edit page if I wanted to, but this'll work fine. Treat your man, cause look, Look at this man, he's a handsome, he's a handsome boy. Oh man. Just size this up, kind of move it over and we can animate this in. Let's say we'll have this start about frame 22, right as this is kind of going past it and I'll animate right on and we'll start with this completely gone. And then over the next 15 frames or so, we'll have it right on like that. So now we have our animation coming in. There it is baby. Last little bit that I want to do is I want a little sparkle in this boy's eye <laughs> just because I think it just puts the sprinkle on top. So how do we do something like that? Well, you can do this a hundred different ways. I'll use a shape. I'm just going to make a little star, like a little star ding thing. I'll hit shift space bar and type S S that'll bring up my shape star. I'll hit add. And we also want a shape render. So S R we'll grab shape render. And now let's take this and put it over our box. And now we have a giant obnoxious star over everything. Great. I'll select our shape star and let's bring the points down to five and we'll make this kind of a normal looking star. That looks good. And just for consistency, let's do a shape transform. So I'll type S T R that'll bring up shape transform. I'll hit add. And now we can rotate this and size it and everything. We could totally do that within the shape itself. It's good practice to have a transform node that does kind of the animation and everything just makes things a little easier later. So let's adjust the offset and let's bring the size down. I'm actually going to link these sizes together. I want this to scale together. So here under Y size, I'll hit equals enter and that'll bring up this blank expression and I can take this little plus thing and choose whatever I want to link it to. So I'll just say X size. You can also just type X size if you want. I'll hit enter and now when I adjust X size, it's going to adjust Y size as well. I wish there was a way to just link those automatically, but 
whatever. Here we are. So we'll put this star like right over his eye, like this, right where that kind of highlight is in his eye, like this, bing, like that. I'll give us a little more room here. And right after this sits for a couple seconds, let's start at like frame 50. We'll make this star kind of grow and rotate. So I'll take this forward, I don't know, to like frame 60 or so. And let's keyframe X size to be right there. And then we'll come to the left a few frames and we'll take X size all the way down. So now it, bing. <laughs> and then we'll have it come back down again here a few frames later. So now we have this kind of animation. It grows and comes back. And let's have it rotate the whole time. So we'll start with rotation at zero here. So we'll hit that keyframe diamond. And then towards the end, we'll have this rotate, I don't know, 180 degrees maybe. Let's see how that looks. Yep, that's gonna be just fine. Bing. <laughs> oh, this is all I actually want to make in life is this kind of thing. So I'll uncheck my text and just have my S transform selected in our spline panel. Hit zoom to fit. Let's take all of these keyframes for our size and hit F on the keyboard to flatten everything out. It flattened out the rotation as well, but it's not that big a deal. Let's see how this looks. Bing. Yep. It's wonderful. That's what we need. All right. So there's our handsome man. Just looking all handsome. Let's see how this looks. This comes in. Treat your man. Bing. <laughs> ah, this is all that is needed. There we have our finished graphics. We can throw this into the edit page. Just grab this box too. Throw it over there. I'll let this cache for a second. Now we'll play this back. See how she looks. Yep. Bing. So good. Ah. So I hope that's helpful for any of you advanced fusion people. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below and I will, I will view them and we'll see. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll address things in a future video. If you want more advanced fusion videos, please let me know. I, I'm kind of, you know, there's a mixed audience here. Some people want the noob stuff. Some people want the advanced stuff. So let me know what you think. I'm on a different shirt suddenly. <laughs>